God bless you. Praise the Lord. We just want to talk to you for a few minutes about words and prayer. Proverbs 18 and 21, I believe, says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Matthew 12 and 30. 37 says, by, with the, by your own words you shall be condemned, or by your own words you shall be justified. The book of James talks about the tongue is a deadly poison. And many of us, we use our tongue for deadly poison instead of for healing and life. A lot of men and a lot of women are hurt in their heart, hurt in their soul, hurt in their spirit. And even though they go to church and they pray, they still say the wrong things and do the wrong thing. But when you come to Jesus, you start practicing. And practices make perfect because in Matthew 5 and 48, he told us to be perfect. Now most of us, we cop out by saying, nobody's perfect. You don't know everybody. Just say you're not perfect. And of course, if you're not seeing through the eyes of God, you wouldn't see the perfection of anyone in the first place because you're too busy looking for errors because you're trying to justify the errors in yourself. Praise the Lord. But Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And it was Jesus that told us that... Uh, that he was the word. John said it in St. John 1 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. And that word came to the earth before many of us were born. We're in the 20th century. So let's go back to the whatever century that Jesus was born in. But he was always God. So but being manifested on the earth in whatever century that was. Six, uh, the, fifth, the first century. Whatever. He left on record to trust in him. A lot of times, even on Facebook, which is a trap for a lot of us to put our business out there for the CIA, FBI, and other pedophiles and derelicts and misfits of the world. I hate to say it, but it's true. But since you're going to put yourself out there on Facebook, man, woman, young man, young woman. Is God in your life? Is the word of God in your life? Are you presenting God? When you, when you want people, you want to express yourself. You want people to see you. Do you. Are you trying to exemplify life? Or are you trying to exemplify death? To exemplify selfishness is to exemplify Satan. So even though you think you're just talking about what kind of man you are, what kind of woman you are, or what you feel as a man, or what you feel as a woman, if it don't have anything to do with what God is saying, then you're representing the devil. You, it's only two ways about it. The gray area is a confused area. So you either go into the left or you go into the right. You're either a sheep or you're a goat. You're either right or you're the wrong. And when we do hit those gray areas, because we're human, that means we're confused and we have to make a decision to go left or right. And if you find out you started going to the left and you should go right, then you got to make a U-turn. Praise the Lord. A lot of things that are posted on Facebook about women is very negative. It's supposed to be godly because you can tell by the little stuff that people get from people. But you're getting it from people that's not even saved. A lot of things that women post about men is not saved. You can tell that the men are hurt and the women are hurt. You should post the word of God. Stay with the word of God. Not something that touches on the word of God, mixes the word of God, and then mixes some satanic stuff in it. Or your hurt and your pain. Because your hurt and your pain, that's why we need to get filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. So even when you pray, you pray in tongues. Not going to the church or speaking in tongues in front of everybody else. They don't know what you're saying. But when you're on your knees praying, you need to be praying in tongues. But you can't pray in tongues if you haven't received Mark chapter 16, verse 17. These are the signs that shall follow them that believe. Because maybe you haven't believed the right way. So keep praying to get it. And let's learn how to pray for our family, friends, and enemies. And associate, because that's what's going to make the world a better place. The answer is in Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. 
We even cut down our family. We have gotten to the point that even on Facebook, there's been so much dissimulation, so much confusion, even on Facebook, on how people talk about their family and disrespect their family. And feuds have started. Husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, sisters, brothers, cousins, aunts, uncles. But let's take out this time. Let's pray. Let's try to be careful what we say in our lives, in our homes, on our jobs, wherever you go, in the supermarket, in the highways, the byways, in your traveling. Let's try to be careful what we talk about. If we represent in Christ, let's try to represent him to the fullest. And if we should fall, and we will, it's easy to point the finger. But look at me pointing the finger. The fingers are coming right back at me and you. When you point the finger, they're coming right back at you. Praise the Lord. So we all going to fall. So that's how you learn how to get strong in the Lord. If you never did anything wrong from A to Z, then you wouldn't need Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16, because you need Jesus. And Acts 1, 12, neither is there salvation in any other name. For well, there is no other name under the heavens whereby you can be saved except in the name of Jesus. So it's not how much of a man you are, how much of a woman you are, but how much Christ is in you to make you born again. We've all been born. Some people say, I've been born like this. I've been born like that. You might have because you were born in sin. Even some things that we say, well, no, God didn't make you like that. Well, if you were born, you were born in sin, yeah, you were born that way. God didn't make you like that. Sin made you like that. That's why you have to be born again. Let us pray. Most Heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we stop by here while traveling through this land. Recognizing that this world is not our home. But we're just pilgrims traveling through this way. Hoping by your mercy and hoping by your grace, God, that you would touch our minds, touch our hearts, touch our soul, our bodies, and our spirit. And save us and help us to accomplish what you told us that we must do. Be born again. We were born in sin and shaping in iniquity. That's what the word says, God. And some of us can see it so plain. We're evil without you. We're murderous without you. We're hateful. We're malicious. We've been vindictive and venomous, snakish. The poison of Satan's snake bite is in us. And we need you as a vaccination to save us and to deliver us. So God, right now, where we stop by here while traveling through this land, asking that you touch our homes, touch our families, every father, every mother, every grandfather, every grandmother, every sister, every brother, every son, every daughter, Every niece and nephew, uncle, aunt, every family member, every friend, even our enemies. God, we ask that you touch now. We need thee like we never needed thee before. We're living in the closing hour where you said the devil has come down to the earth with anger, anger against humanity. He hates us and trying to destroy us. God, save us from ourselves. Help us to better ourselves. Help us to control our minds. Help us to control our bodies, souls, and spirits. Help us to control our tongue. Help us to control ourselves in this world. Help us to be better in our families. Help us to be better in the world. If you do it, God, we will do our best to do better. But we can't do it without you. The scripture says in Philippians 4 and 13 of the word that we can do all things through you, through Christ that strengthens us. So in ourself, we recognize we can't do nothing. Help us, God. In Jesus' name, help us. We thank you for what you've already done. From our father's loins to our mother's womb to this very present hour right now. We thank you that you brought us from a mighty long way. You didn't have to do it, but you did. And so, God, we say thank you. Sometimes we've been in trouble. Sometimes we've been sick. But you've been a lawyer. You've been a doctor. You've been a friend. Many times, God, you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. So, my Father, please continue to work in us. I heard it. I saw it read that you won't let nothing take us out of your hand. Don't let us take ourselves out of your hand. Don't let us backslide. 
but help us to get stronger. A lot of us try to be strong, but we're weak. And we ask that you strengthen us now. Strengthen our family members. Strengthen everybody so we can do better because we don't want to die and go to hell. And if by chance we can live, amen, godly on the earth, and when I say godly, of course, I know we can live godly on the earth, but when I say have a little heaven on earth, I mean our rent paid, our notes paid, our health paid, and everything being well, helping us to seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and you adding those things that we don't have to look over our shoulder worrying about owing no man, no woman, worried about our family. God will be so gracious to you. Maybe we ask a little too much and maybe we give too little. Maybe that's the same thing we do in a relationship as men and women. We want so much from the man, so much from the woman, but we give too less as a man, too less as a woman, but we want a whole lot. Help us, God, to change from our selfish in evil ways. Help us to be better, whatever our title is. Father, mother, brother, sister, uncle, aunt, whatever we are, help us, man, woman, help us all, God. In Jesus' name, save us, and we shall be saved. Deliver us, and we shall be delivered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. God is good all the time. Not because I said so, just because God is. Praise the Lord. Love you. In Jesus' name.